Hi everybody, I'm Stephanie Daniels. I'm a physical therapist at Chief Freddy and Associates and today I'm gonna to be running through a few tests to help you screen um, for problems that might relate back to back pain and possible pelvic floor muscle dysfunction. Um, we're gonna run through a test of your breathing, a test of your pelvic floor contraction and relaxation, and also your hip mobility. As we discussed in the article, these are common areas, especially in women, that tend to have problems associated with them when they have low back pain and some kind of pelvic floor complaint as well. So one of the things you can test at home is your breathing ability. We know that the diaphragm muscle, which sits tucked under, under your rib cage, works in a coordinated fashion with your pelvic floor. So if we are working with someone in the clinic and we notice that they cannot breathe well using their diaphragm, there might be some issues with how well their pelvic floor is performing and that might indicate that there's some sort of pelvic floor muscle problem going on that may also be associated with their low back pain. So things that you're looking for that might indicate there's a problem with your breathing. If your belly's not moving very much, you're only seeing your chest move. If you can't really feel a lot of rib movement as well. And I'll demonstrate what that should look like next. So you can try that at home. So we'll go over diaphragmatic breathing to test how well you can breathe. So put one hand on your chest, one hand on your belly, lying comfortably. You can put a pillow underneath your knees. You want to take a nice slow breath in through the nose. And out through the mouth. So ideally you'll feel the hand on the belly rise up more than the hand on the chest. So I'll do that again. So with diaphragmatic breathing, you wanna do it nice and slow. Let the air fill in the belly, feel that belly rise. And then the other area you wanna feel for are the ribs, feeling the ribs kind of lifting up gently and then depressing down gently. You'll probably feel more belly movement than rib movement, but we wanna feel that as well. So taking a nice slow inhale, followed by a nice slow exhale. And try that out for a few breaths, maybe five, 10, and see how well you can repeat that. So in the next test, we're gonna test how well your pelvic floor is working. Um, this is an easy test you can do just using your hand over the pelvic floor muscles to see if you can feel them contracting and relaxing. If you don't feel any movement or you feel the wrong kind of movement, that might indicate there's something um, going on with the muscles that might need a little bit more help or evaluation. Your pelvic floor muscles live um, on the inside of the sit bone. This is a model of the female pelvis. So if you're sitting up upright and not tilting your low back, you should feel contact on the sit bones here. You can reach your hand under the sit bones in between um, the sit bone and the anus and you can palpate or feel your pelvic floor muscles contracting and relaxing. And I'll show you how to do that next. So um, for this test, you're gonna find your sit bone. To find that, kind of reach down into the area between where your buttock and your thigh meet and then just kind of push into that spot. You should feel a bony prominence there. That's your sit bone that I pointed out on the model. And then just kind of walk your fingers in between that space. You can sit back on top of it if you don't have pain. And then I want you to just kind of tighten those muscles like you're holding in gas or urine and relax. You should feel some tightening under your finger or tension. When you tighten, you should feel it let go when you relax. So try that a few more times, tightening and relaxing like you're holding in urine or gas, tightening and relaxing. You should not feel any pushing down or bulging into your finger with this movement. 
So for the final test, we're gonna look at your hip mobility. We know that if your hips are overly tight, they're gonna affect the pelvic floor, like we talked about in the article with the tree and the hammock analogy. If the, tight, the hips are too tight, they're gonna to pull too tightly on the pelvic floor. If the hips are too weak, they're gonna let the pelvic floor and that hammock kind of sag down. And in either end of the extreme, muscles don't work too well when they're too weak or they're too tight. So to test your hip mobility, we're gonna do a pretty easy one that most of us are familiar with. Just taking one leg and crossing it over the other knee and then seeing how far down you can drop that knee towards the floor. Um, the more that you're able to bring the knee to the floor means that you have a little bit better mobility in that hip. So I would test one side, notice how far down you can go, and then bring the other leg up, test the other side. Let's say you can only get to about here. We know that knee is up a little bit higher than the right side, so that hip might be a little bit too tight. And we can work on checking out why that might be the case. So if you're having any trouble with those three tests, um, if it's breathing or hip mobility, you can work on that. We do have some videos on our website to support that. Um, with pelvic floor contractions, we know there's some research that shows that majority of people have trouble doing it the right way with just like verbal cueing. So um, if that's a particular concern for you, it might be a good idea to see a pelvic floor physical therapist. Um, but you can try some of those other things first, see if they work for you. And um, please feel free to reach out with a reach out to us at any point if you have questions or concerns. And thanks for watching.